Hi there readers, it's JP and I've got another tutorial for you. Actually I've got basically a two-in-one tutorial this time. So last week we did uh, this bracelet tutorial with the um, bugles and uh, the herringbone stitch and then this was the other colorway I had done. So this week I thought I'd show you how to make a pair of earrings to go with the bracelet and a ring. So you're getting two tutorials uh, for the price of one. So I show you both the ring and the earrings. So what you're going to need like uh, are some 110 beads and you can use um, so just any 110 is fine and then pearls these are four millimeter but as you can see you can use any four millimeter bead that you have. So actually you don't even have to limit yourself to a four millimeter you can use a, a three or a six as long as you're consistent with the size. Um, the only thing that's going to change if you use a slightly bigger bead is you'll, you'll need to put more beads on the side. Um, but if you just stick with the four millimeter then this, this is going to match perfectly. So you're going to use so I have pearls or bicones, you can use fire polish and rondelles. All of those will work. So I've got my fire polish there and I've got a rondelle over here. Any of those will work. Uh, any other type of round beads. I've got some drugs over here. Uh, so you don't have to use pearls necessarily, just a round bead is fine, faceted rounds, anything. And then you'll need some bugles if you've got them. So these are three, four millimeter bugles. You could even use the six if you've got them. Uh, they're just gonna, you know, this space is just gonna be a little bit longer, but I think they'll still look amazing. And um, if you don't have bugles, then what I would recommend doing is just using seed beads. But I would suggest using a different color just so you get this nice sort of pretty pattern. But again, you don't have to because these are the same color and they look pretty nice that way too. But I think it adds a nice little pop of color. So if you switched over here, for example, if you didn't have these gold bugles like I do and just use some white ones that match the pearl, that would look really nice too. So lots of design possibilities. And... Um, so this is the earring, pretty straightforward and simple and dainty. And I'm looking for my ruler, just to give you an idea of how big it is. So this is about an inch, and yeah, so it's about an inch. And this is the ring. Uh, so what I basically did was basically take the design of the bugles on either side of it, and then the ring sits in the center. And I'm going to put it on my finger just to show you where how it looks. And there it is. So in my case over here, I have these two beads. This one of the beads here is really sort of big. So this is kind of popping out a little too much, but they're actually four, but that's driving me crazy. And I'm probably going to go back in and fix that and change them out. But, uh, because you can see this one's really, really big and it's making everything else bulge out. But normally it just kind of wraps around the pearl. Anyway, so as you can see over here, pretty cute. Well, let's get started. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Whoops. And... Okay, so to start, what you're going to do is you have four beads on your thread like I do here and you're just going to go through those first two beads and so I'm just going to go through the first two and I'll get my thumb out of the way there and the beads should end up side by side next to each other so there they are Fairly straightforward, and I'm just going to leave a little, pull my thread a little bit just to give it a little more of a tail. And so now what I'm going to do is pick up an 11, just one, and go back through those other set of beads once again. So you have that, you have this uh, little lop, weird looking little pyramid, I guess. Go back up the first two here. And 
and then go through that single bead here that's by itself that we just added. And now pick up four elevens and go back through the bead and then go into the first bead in that group of four, just the first one. Uh, let's see if I'm going to get this focused a little bit better. And shift these over. Pick up an 11, go in to the next 11, and again, pick up one. 11, go into the next one. And pick up an 11, go in the next two. So there's our loop for the ear wire and you can go ahead and uh, go back through the beads to reinforce. So I have my windows open, by the way, so you could probably hear the birds. Um, it's a really nice day here uh, in St. Louis, and so I am enjoying having the windows open. So anyway, just to continue, just reinforce, not adding any beads. All right, and I've gone through, and now I'm back towards where I need to be. Whoops, make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay, I'm just gonna keep working on the left side. So go up, so I'm coming out of that bead there, so I'm just gonna go up into my two beads here. I think I might shift these out of the way so it helps the camera focus better. So it focuses on my hand as opposed to the beads that are on the mat. Okay, so then pick up two 11s. Go down the first 11 on the opposite side. So the thread's coming out of this one, so you want to go to the opposite bead and go down into it. So this is herringbone stitch, but I'm sure you know that. <laughs> and there. So this is what you should get. Then go back across and go up the two beads. So there we go. When you're first starting this, because it's kind of hard to hold, it gets a little clumsy, but once you build a little bit up, it'll be easier. And then you're gonna pick up two 11s, sorry, two bugles, not 11s, and go into the first one here on the opposite side again. And just push the bugles together to get them to come down and just, and then pull on the thread. So, um, and they should just fall into, adjust into place here in a second. So there you are. Now you're gonna go across, so here's where I'm exiting. So I'm going across, up the 11 and the bugle. And that should sit properly now. Okay, so now we'll go back and pick up two 11s. Go down the bugle. And then across to the other bugle and then up the bugle and the 11. 
And that also secures those bugles into place now really well. And then repeat again, two more 11s, down the first 11, and then up the two 11s on the opposite side again from where the thread is. Once again, two 11s, go down one, and go up the two. There we go. All right, now uh, to add the pearl, I'm gonna grab my pearl over here, pick up the pearl and the two 11s, just like that, bring them down to the bottom, all the way to the bottom of the thread. So what you're gonna do is skip over the two and then go into the pearl and then go into the opposite. So the thread's coming out of this one, you wanna go down into this opposite one here. Just like that. And now it's set in place. Now go up, go across, and then up into the 11 and the pearl. and then the 11. So make sure you're staying on the same side. So I happen to be on the left side here, so stay on the left, and if you're on the right, stay on the right, and vice versa. All right, now pick up an 11 and go down into just the first, just that 11 here on this side and so you get a little pico over there. Now pick up four 11s. Okay, so there's where the thread is coming out of. I'm gonna go into this 11. So I'm skipping over the pearl and just going down into the 11. And that gets the beads to wrap around the pearl. So from here, go across to this one. And again, pick up four to take care of the other side. So there's my four. And go up into, sorry about that, go up into the 11 there that's sitting right on top of the pearl. All right, so I also went into the, the bead with the Pico too, so, but that's fine because I actually wanted to do that. So this is what you should get, and then go into this first 11. And then I'm gonna do is tie a half inch knot between this 11 and the pearl and then go through the pearl to get the knot in the pearl. This is a little bit faster than having to weave the thread. All right, so now I'm just gonna go into the pearl and my half inch knot is done. Uh, get these to kind of straighten out. All right, and then just weave the thread up into a, some of these other beads. So I'm just gonna go up the two and then go back down. And 
I can make another knot over here. And that covers about two knots, and that should be pretty secure. These earrings are pretty dainty. And once again, pull that knot into up into the pearl. I should have plenty of room. And I'm just going to weave it a little bit more. And just up here. And that's it. So just to kind of get it all out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and trim. That's done. And did I have an ear wire? I do have an ear wire. So go ahead and add the ear wire. All right, so there you are. There are my two little dainty earrings. And now to make the ring. So the ring, you're going to start in just about the same way. Start with 411s. So there they are, got my four, bring them down, and then go through the first two. Just giving myself a little bit more of a tail. And so there's the first two. All set. Uh, and then, actually, I guess I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and pick up two and go down into the two here. And then go back up three. So I'm only doing this just to help reinforce, get that going. So this is what you should have. And this should be secure if I pull on it, I could s the, the beads aren't moving. And then go ahead and pick up your bugles. And of course, you want to get them. My bugles are not all the same size. So there, I'm trying to make sure I'm picking up two that are about the same. And I fold. So it helps to fold it over like this because that gets it into place. So I fold that over and then I'm just going to go into the bead here so the thread's coming up this way so just going into the bead on the opposite side. Make sure they don't twist because they're going to want to twist. So um, there you go you have it just like before. So if you've made the bracelet and um, you know what you're doing. So go across Go up the 11 in the bugle. And then pick up two 11s. And go down into the bugle. Get the beads to kind of pop into place, go across the other bugle, and then go up through the bugle and the 11. And I'm just going up into that 11, and then I'll tighten up the thread here. And you want to, to tighten it up, what I do is I just hold it between my index finger and my thumb, and then I tug on the thread with my other hand. And now, Pick up two, go down just the 11, and then go across and go up the two 11s. And 
again, just making sure that's nice and tight. And then one more time. Pick up two 11s, go across. And up these two, which I think I turned my uh, beadwork around. All right, so now again to add the pearl, pick up the pearl, two 11s, and bring them down to the bottom. Skip those two guys, go just through the pearl, and then go into the opposite 11. So threads coming out of this one, I'm gonna go into this one. Okay, I meant, <laughs> totally screwed that up. Okay, skip over the two 11s, and I just did it too. Go through the pearl first before you do that. Go through the pearl and then go down to the 11. My little blooper. Uh, so there you go. And these guys will fall into place. Go across to the 11 on the opposite side and then up into the pearl and then straight up into the 11. So there you go, it's in place. Now to add the beads on the side, go, go back through the um, 11 on the other side there. And pick up four 11s. So there's four, go into the per or, um, 11 down there at the bottom underneath the pearl. And then across and go up. Of course, if you're beating nice and tight, this is what you want. You want it to be secure and, but it gets a little bit hard trickier. There you go, to get your needle through. And once again, I'm gonna pick up four and go up into the 11 there at the top. And there you are. Now continue adding 11s. So pick up two 11s, go into this first 11 here, right next to it. Then just go across and go up the two 11s, just like you're doing before. I'm just going to continue with the pattern. And once again, two 11s, go down, go across and go up two. All right, so I've got my set of three here like I do there, so I'm just gonna add my two bugles into place. And I'm gonna go down to this one here, that's across. And I'm just gonna try to bend these down together. And they're not gonna wanna do, <laughs> they're not gonna wanna bend down. Uh, so just kind of push them together and then tug on the thread. If you find they're not moving, um, they're not cooperating. All right, so here's where I'm exiting that bead, that 11, so go up the 11 and the bugle. And one more time, pick up two 11s, go down the bugle. Then go across, the, go through the bugle on the other side, 
and up the 11. Alright, so now what you're going to do is just continue doing herringbone with the 11s. So picking up two until you basically are making the ring band. So this is the center of the ring. Uh, so it should sit right at the top of your um, finger here. And then the rest is just the ring band. Uh, so I'm just going to have you go ahead and keep going and then I'll show you how to close them together even though it should be fairly straightforward because you're just going to it's still just herring bone stitch. Alright, so you should have uh, something like this for your ring band. And all you're going to do um, is basically connect the two ends together to do that. You're just going to, so I'm coming out of this bead over here. I'm going to go down into that one, which matches directly. Bring them close. And I'm going to hold them apart just so it makes it easier to see, hopefully. And then go across to this bead here. To the 11, that's directly across. If I can, ugh, annoying. Annoying that I can't get it through. <laughs> uh, I need one more hand. There we go. So, bring them tight as close as you can get them. So, try not to ch change the orientation on you too much here, just to make sure. So, I started off on this bead here, went down to this one over here, went across and came up. Now I'm just going to go across to that one. And that should just tighten the whole thing. Give it a good tug. And there it is. It's going to be very seamless. You shouldn't be able to tell that the two are connected. Go across again and then just weave the thread basically. So I went across and went up two and I'm going to go across and go down maybe three or four and I just want to tie off my thread is essentially what I'm doing now. So that should be secure. I like to do this a few times just to make sure everything is nice and secure. And you'll feel that the band is secure. I like to do herringbone um, for ring bands just because I find that it's flexible and yet still very secure that it's not going to fall apart on you. Because um, rings tend to get a lot of wear and tear just because of, of, you know, you're wearing it on your finger and your fingers and your hands are doing stuff. So, okay, let's get this to needle to pop out because it's bumping up against the 11. There we go. So, and I'm just going to go back across and just down a few of these and I think I'm going to call it a day. Of course, if you want to tie a knot, you can if you feel better about it. Definitely do some half hitch knots. I find that they just kind of cause the beads to kind of bulge out, so that's why I don't do it. Okay, and let's um, get that on my finger here, and I can show you what it looks like. So it's pretty dainty. I like the way it came out. There it is, really simple, but very secure, and I like the way the little hair got the bugles on the side of it. Of course, you can change the pattern however you like, so you can actually put the bugles right up next to it if you want without having the seed beads in between. And then these are the earrings. So now we have a complete set that you can make. And again, um, as I mentioned before, you can pretty much change out this inner bead to whatever you want. Um, in this case, I've used bicones. They're four millimeter bicones versus four millimeter pearls. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.